up, my people? So I want to take you guys to the to the beginning of this war between Russia and Ukraine. There's a special operation. Putin is a special operation in Ukraine and how everything started. And then we're going to talk about, you know, who's to blame for this war. All right. Uh, let's go. Let's watch these videos. Poroshenko will have a hard time winning back hearts and minds in this city as the people of Donetsk sweep up the debris of their homes and livelihoods they are hardened against a president they say is killing his own people we are Ukrainian but they kill us this man says so we probably need our own country but people in Kiev they are not brothers for us the shells hit these homes days ago but the tears are still fresh we live on the ground. It was so hard for two weeks, especially for 27, 28, 29th. But only today it's quiet. Sorry, sorry, I need to go. Two people were killed outside this block of flats last Wednesday. One of them was a 50-year-old woman, the other a 34-year-old woman. Her husband, who won't talk to us, he says he's in shock, managed to make it down to the cellar with their little child, but she just didn't have the time. And this is a story that repeats itself over and over in dozens of apartment blocks with civilians being killed by the constant shelling around Donetsk. Canadian ambassador to Ukraine is recently claiming that nothing could have uh, prevented uh, Vladimir Putin a special operation in Ukraine. She said, um, I don't think there was anyone who could stop Putin doing what Putin did. Given the frame of mind that we all expect him to, to be in, he wasn't believing history, he wasn't logical, he wasn't rational, he is irrational, so I don't know how one prevents that, she said, Galadza the Canadian ambassador to Ukraine at the moment. However, Ivan Krachanovsky, a political science, science professor with expertise in Ukraine and Russia at the University of Ottawa, voices his opinion by saying that Galadza claims are not supported by evidence or scholarship because um, this war could have been avoided and prevented, which I totally agree with him, specifically because Ukraine could have agreed or signed an agreement uh, with Russia in which Ukraine promised to remain a neutral country and the fulfillment of the Minsk Accord could have stopped Putin's special operation. The Minsk Accords were two agreements and the first signed in 2014 and the second in 2015 that were established in an effort to end fighting in the Donbass region between Ukrainian forces and Russian separatists at the, at the time. The agreements, however, granted self-governing rights to areas of the Donbass region that were held by the separatist, separatists among the other pledges. The 2014 agreement broke down and failed to stop the, the fighting. Um, the updated agreement in 2015 was never properly implemented and ceasefire violations from both sides continue. 
However, Western states continued to express support for such a move and uh, indicated that uh, it may happen in the future, a prospect that Putin exaggerated for political reasons. There was no justification for war, in my opinion, but Putin's special operation was something he felt was necessary for this reason. And at the same time, this does not mean that NATO expansion or using Ukraine as a military pull against Russia was a total non-issue. NATO clearly provoked this war and put Ukraine in a difficult situation. These are two Slavic brothers. Why do you have to fight and kill each other? Of a stupidity. Following Russia's move into Ukrainian territory, Zelensky himself conceded in March that Ukraine will not join NATO, which was an attempt to dismiss Putin as irrational, are typical of wartime propaganda that similar rhetoric was used to describe former Iraqi President Saddam Hussein in the run-up uh, to the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq and killing of Saddam. This is definitely nothing new, as you all know. However, viewing Putin as a rational actor does not mean the Russian president's his action are justifiable or that he didn't make a grave miscalculation about uh, his prospect for a speedy victory in Ukraine. Ending this war is currently a distant prospect. It's almost impossible right now. A few months ago, Ukrainska Pravda reported that uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson had uh, pressured Zelensky to ditch peace negotiation with Russia, despite uh, Tino's progress that uh, had been made in such talks. There was a real possibility that a deal could have been reached, but that it uh, would not be accepted by Western countries, like the U.S. and Canada, who are using Ukraine as a proxy war against Russia, also England. This now means that uh, such a real possibility of a peaceful deal has now become much more distant the interests of the West are not to have any peace deal unless Russia basically capitulates, which is not very likely to happen. Russia is way stronger than the West thought. The war in Ukraine could have been prevented, of course. UK, US, Canada, and its NATO allies escalated the conflict instead of pushing for a diplomatic solution and regard NATO's action as a major factor in stalking the danger of war. We see NATO provoking this war over many years. Since the uh, Bucharest summit declaration and the U.S. and Canada support for the 2014 uprising, which amounted to a coup that plunged the country into a civil war, is a coup against Yanukovych. Canada and the U.S. should also have supported the implementation of the Minsk Agreement and the Second Minsk Agreement called for the pullout of all foreign armed formations, military equipment, and also mercenaries from the territory of Ukraine. However, Canada, U.S., and NATO has undermined that agreement through Operation Unifier a military mission in which uh, under of Canadian troops and the non-lethal military equipment um, have been deployed in Ukraine to train uh, the country's security forces, including members of the neo-Nazi Azov Battalion. In addition, Canada moved a warship into the Black Sea in January and has conducted military enhanced air policy near Russia is border in Eastern Europe. Since 2014, hundreds of uh, Canadian soldiers are also stationed as part of a battle group in Latvia. In 2017, Canada placed Ukraine on its list of approved armed sports countries, allowing Canadian manufacturers to sell weapons and ammunition to government and approve and users in that country. In 2020, Canada sold three uh, 50 billion worth of uh, military goods to Ukraine. 
including automatic weapons, ammunition, electronic equ equipment, imaging technology, and software. In so many ways, Canada and NATO countries has provoked, there was, uh, they has provoked this conflict in Ukraine. This is very much a NATO proxy war. All these Western media, they have been lying. They have been lying about this war. They all have been telling lies and half-truth about what's going on. That's why we should stay neutral and pray for this nonsense to end sooner than later. And not to escalate to a third world war since we have a responsible people running this world. This is Bob Sankari. Do not forget to subscribe, hit like button, and share this video. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your day.